So our first job is to make sure the diagnosis is correct. Once we're sure it is a CKM, we try to put it into one of three categories. It is, it is one that is likely to shrink and we need to just monitor and be sure that that occurs. It is one that is a large CKM. It's not threatening to the baby before birth, but is likely to need immediate care after birth. So we need to make sure that the right place of delivery occurred and the right team was there to deal with it surgically after birth. Or is it the very rare one that may need intervention before birth and actually removing the CCAM before the baby's born and allowing the pregnancy to continue. So that would be the fetal surgery group. So one of the good things about a CCAM diagnosis is that the majority are self-regulating, meaning they can expand and look very scary, but then will shrink spontaneously and there's no need for any intervention at all in utero or in the newborn period. There is a subgroup where that abnormal proliferation continues. And while the rest of the lung is developing normally, the mass effect, that is the, the chest has a finite volume which it can accommodate. And if the CCAM gets too big, then it starts to squash the other organs that are in the chest. It starts to put pressure and compression on the other developing lung that can start to hurt the normal development of the lung. And it can also put pressure on the heart itself and the big blood vessels that are returning blood to the heart such that the baby will start to develop some swelling. What we call hydrops is a name we call that swelling or edema. That's generalized swelling of the baby that we can detect by ultrasound. So it's only in that rare subgroup and we don't know precisely if we had 100 babies diagnosed with CCAM, how many are going to go on to develop problems versus how many are going to regress. We suspect that the vast majority, perhaps as many as 90%, will go on to regress and we won't actually have to do anything except monitor and be sure that regression is occurring. But it's the 10% or less that that regression does not occur continued expansion of the CCAM occurs and we start to see secondary problems either from too much compression of the lung or compression of the heart and that swelling and high drops develop and that's the group that we believe we need to monitor very very carefully uh, perhaps with as often as every three or four days repeating the ultrasound to see how rapidly the progression is occurring and it's that small subgroup that we uh, may need to consider an intervention before birth in order to prevent progressive cardiac compression and eventually fetal death. But it's a very rare subgroup and the majority of babies with CCAM will do well. Frequently many of them are asymptomatic at birth and that's wonderful. And the option for treatment in that situation is to let the infant grow. We generally will do a chest x-ray or two after birth to assess how the lungs look and the size of the CCAM, but frequently we'll let the infants go home and see them in an outpatient setting. In that situation, we'll bring the infants back at two or three months of age and get another imaging study called a CAT scan. After that point, the general recommendation is that CCAMs be removed. The reasons for removing a CCAM include infection of the lung or infection of the CCAM itself. The other is that there's a very small potential for malignancy or cancer within the CCAM, and that would be the other indication to have the CCAM removed. The exact timing of the surgery, though, is very controversial, but generally we would recommend by a year of age that the children have their CCAMs removed.